the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if... Baseball has always been America's pastime. But it was never just for men and boys. Women have always been a part of baseball because there have always been girls who wanted to play the game. Well, when I was very young, I always had a tennis ball, always, and was throwing it against the house or anywhere and just catching. I just liked, I don't know, I just liked playing ball. And the Christmas of when I was about 12 years old, I asked for a baseball glove. And my mother told me that girls don't get glove, baseball gloves. And I said, well, then I don't want anything for Christmas. If I can't have a glove, I don't want anything. So needless to say, I did have this glove. It was the same glove that I still have today that I played in the league with. The women and girls who wound up in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League learned to play ball the same way that men and boys did. They learned from their families, in their neighborhoods, and through sports clubs and organized teams. When scouts for the league looked, they found countless talented women and girls already on the field. My dad was very interested in, in sports, and I started with him, just, uh, we would go out and play catch. My dad played on a, uh, what they call back then, a sandlot team. And uh, he and my uncle and all of them played on Sunday afternoons. And so he was a first baseman, and he had me out throwing balls to him when I was six years old or five years old, playing catch with him. Dad was a real sports fan. And frequently on Sunday afternoons, he would take me to Valley Field to watch the Black Leagues play over there. And I have met some of those fellows that played there. I liked baseball. He, he taught me to like baseball. He played catch with me and all that. I was born to uh, Marvin and Julia Kidd, 1933, the fifth of six children, three boys and three girls. And we lived on a farm at that time, a little place out in the country. And about the only recreation outside of work was playing ball, baseball. Dad was a great baseball player, and my two older brothers. And as I came along, I started playing also. In any free moment I had, we were playing ball. In Chicago, uh, I guess you get the picture in that type of a neighborhood where there's a tavern on every other corner. Mm -hmm. Well, my dad would stop and have a little refreshment on the way home, and that's the group he played horseshoes with and played softball with. And not having a boy, uh, I was the tag along. So he had to take me to the softball games, uh, which I was a gopher. Of course, they couldn't have picked a better uh, person than me because I wanted this badly. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be on the ball field since I can remember. Many girls began their baseball careers playing with their brothers and neighborhood boys. My mother died when I was 17 months old. I never knew my mother, but my brothers and sisters actually raised me. The youngest boy, a brother, was nine years older than I was, and he had to babysit set me and so on. If he wanted to go out to play ball, I had, he had to take me or else he couldn't go. So I... They'd stick me out in the outfield, and eventually I'd work up to play in the infield, but I played ball ever since I can remember. It was my brothers that uh, taught me to play ball. Well, I happened to be the only girl in the neighborhood of all boys, and that was from you know age 10 on. So if I didn't play with them, I wouldn't be playing with anybody. <laughs> For one brother, John, okay. he, and he was a good ball player. Okay. So, but... Uh, Whenever I could, whenever I had, didn't have chores to do or anything, or drive the tractor or whatever, we, John and I, would hit balls and play. And we had a lot of neighbor kids, and every Sunday it was known that we would take turns going to each other's houses and play baseball. Not softball, because the boys didn't want to play softball, so we had to play baseball. If you weren't any good, you sat on the sidelines. But if you were good, they asked you to play. Well, it was a small town. I played baseball all the time, most of the time. I had a ballpark across the street from my house. And if I wasn't there, the boys came over and got me. So, <laughs> and we'd pick up sides and we'd play all, play all morning. In the afternoon, we'd go swimming, come home after supper, go play ball again. Then go home and go to bed. <laughs> but my mother and father, all they knew were to find me at the ball field. 
played out in the fields with the boys <laughs> and uh, in Lincoln Park. You know, it wasn't very populated and uh, so there was a lot of fields out there where we lived. In fact, I think we were like the only house or maybe one other house on the block on the one side of the street and maybe one or two on the other side. And so there was a lot of fields out there and we would take an old sickle and a sigh and we'd cut the weeds down and make our own ball field. And of course, if you hit it to right field, you were out because you didn't have enough players. I had an older brother that had a paper route. So I would help him on his paper route, earn money. So I was one that always came up with the bats, the balls, and the equipment. So if the boys wanted to play ball or any sport, because I had football and basketball, they had to come and get me first. So, <laughs> so I was never left out. <laughs> All of the experience in sports came from the neighborhood because my neighborhood was full of boys. There was only one other girl. Gladys and I were the only two, and she didn't like any sports, but I always played. And I had uh, a lot of fun. I even played tackle football, you know, on an open lot. And in the wintertime, of course, the snow was up over the house, so we'd move the furniture. Uh, then we would play ball in the house. We went from the living room to the dining room. And I can remember one brother, he was fantastic. Cincinnati Reds wanted him, but he got injured in World War II. And uh, he's the one that taught me everything. He played shortstop, and of course that's where I played. But we played all winter because, uh, you know, we just played in the house and, and uh, we just played, that's all we had. I was a little bit of a tomboy. I played a little ball in Kenosha at the school and I used to be embarrassed to go up and hit because I hit better than the older kids. I started playing ball when I was about five with my uncle, so he lived next door. But when we moved in the county, it was an all different story. So I played mostly with my brothers and sisters and stuff. I set out one of 11 children. I have five sisters and five brothers. And uh, my three younger brothers were very close to my age. So I spent a lot of time with them and my two older brothers they were exceptional baseball players, and I used to watch them all the time. And the one was a pitcher, and he showed me how to throw different pitches. I got to play with my younger brothers and, and our friends in the area. Um, you know, just pick up games, choose sides, and find an empty field where you could play. And that was about the most of it. We didn't have anything for girls in that time period. Uh, girls were just not allowed to play ball, especially on boys' teams and there were no sports for girls in these schools. For most young girls, there were few opportunities to play ball outside the neighborhood. Most American schools today have sports for both boys and girls, but in the 1930s and 40s, sports were largely reserved for male students. Some high schools allowed girls to participate in a few sports, field hockey, basketball, softball, and cheerleading. Some schools allowed girls to play on boys' teams, most, however, failed to provide any opportunities for girls. So baseball-loving girls made the best of it, ignoring any social disapproval so they could play the game they loved. In those days, if you had a mitt and you had a ball, well, you went out and played ball. But I had to play with the boys because the girls couldn't catch me, you know. And then they would say, don't play with that shorty Mars. She's nothing but a tomboy. In those days, no one would play with me. Of course, I couldn't play with the girls anyway. But my name was not good, you know, they, it wasn't exactly right for a girl to go out and play ball in those days, you know. I was a freshman in high school and my oldest brother was a senior and the basketball coach told him he sure wished I was a boy. <laughs> the girls couldn't compete. They were not allowed to, they, they thought it was too strenuous for girls to play ball. As far as uh, playing sports, uh, I loved it. I could probably have been on the boys baseball team in high school. But at being a girl, there was no way you could do it. So instead of that, I became a cheerleader. We could be a cheerleader for basketball and football. Later on, when I started in high school and uh, was uh, warming up the catcher or kitchen batting practice for the boys or coaching first base, which I did a lot, um, uh, I thought I wish there was a girls team. Well, this is, we're talking about the 1940s. And um, individual sports were only for those elite 
um, families that had money that could have private lessons. There was no physical education in the schools during the 40s, but baseball was one of those things that every small town had a baseball team. Even though schools did little to promote sports for girls, organized sports were nevertheless present in towns throughout America. Young ball players joined teams and leagues sponsored by towns, factories, and churches. Scouts from the All-Americans traveled the country to watch players softball and baseball both in city parks, town tournaments, and industrial league championships, all to find the best players to join the new league. We really played a lot of sports. I played a lot of basketball, and that was also city. And when I say city, you, we came to Grand Rapids, Holland, Zealand, and played teams from those cities. So we were really into all sports. At that time, I didn't start bowling yet. I was busy with baseball and basketball and volleyball, but you didn't have that stuff in high school. There wasn't enough of that going on for girls. So you had to go you know, look outside of school. When I was in eighth grade, I played first base on the boys' softball team. That, since it was a county school, we, we competed with other county schools and earned a letter at that school. Um, I, of course, went to junior high school in the city and uh, there was no opportunity for women back then. And so I played on um, industrial league teams. Now Rockford, Illinois was the largest machine tool center in the world. The town was full of factories of all kinds. Each of those uh, industrial corporations had a men's baseball team and a women's softball team. So I played then on the industrial league teams. I graduated from high school in 42. After graduation, everybody had a war job. And uh, there wasn't much, you couldn't get any gas, or you couldn't, you couldn't do hardly anything. So there was only th two things to do, go swimming, or play ball. So I did both. And we had a semi-pro baseball team in our town, and they practiced two blocks from my house. So I would go down there and practice with them. And I started out shagging flies, your batting practice. And um, they realized they had a pretty good arm then they started letting me throw batting practice. And then uh, the second baseman taught me all the pitches, you know, throwing overhand and the curves and the drops and the screwballs and, and change of pace. And, uh, and uh, I went on a couple of uh, exhibitions with their team. You know, in those days, women were supposed to behave differently, and we were told not to play on a team that was coached by a man. And that was our, what they told us at Ohio State. And so we, but then I loved softball so much that I thought, well, what I do in the summer is my own business as long as I make my grades in the winter. So I played for local teams that were coached by men, and we went to state tournaments and so forth. So we had pretty fair teams. Eventually, we played night ball for a shoe company, J&K Shoe Company, and, and we were hired to work at the shoe company because we played softball. So every summer we did that, and we had a pretty fair team. I lived in Virginia, Richmond, and I, I think I was interested in sports <laughs> the day I was born. Do you remember how early you started playing baseball or softball? Yes, when I was 13. And I played for Lucky Strike. They didn't know I was playing, and when they found out how old I was, they, they let me go. Then I joined another team. Well, I played softball in college because in 1939, we got word that Walter Brown, who owned the Boston Garden, wanted to do something in the summer, and there had really never been much going on. And so all of a sudden, I heard that he was going to sponsor a team, and in I walked to the Boston Garden and walked out to shortstop. And of course, I was a lefty, and they sort of said to me, you know, you 
can't play shortstop if you're a lefty. So I went home, and there was a gentleman who had just come off the last boat from Ireland, and their curling was quite similar to the way we pitched softball. And I was always quite determined, so I'll, I went out in the backyard and practiced with my father and pitched in the Boston Garden in 39 and in 40 and was honored to think that Walter Brown took us down to Madison Square Garden and we played in New York. In Forest Park, there was the Parishy Bloomer Girls professional softball team. And so they had a farm team. And when I was 10 years old, my physical education teacher, who was a Parishy Bloomer Girl professional retired, told me to try out for their farm team and then eventually to be on their team. And I did, and I made it. And I was so small and everything that they had to, they had a special uniform for me. The others were black and white and they had a blue and gold thing that, that they could find to fit me. <laughs> but I was strong and mighty though, very strong. <laughs> small but mighty. Those were the church leagues around the city of Boston. And then uh, Park League, they played. And then we played in the tournaments through the Northeast, played against the Ray Bestos in Connecticut. And, went out to Pittsfield, Mass, and played against uh, different teams in Worcester for tournaments. So you got a little more of the experience that way. Little community had their own girls softball team, and they traveled around, um, usually on a Sunday afternoon, and played one another. And I played in a league that was, uh, the team that I played with, with the Sioux Law Cats out of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and we played in a league with the Canadian teams. I started playing with the Pasadena Ramblers, and that was a traveling league during the war. And we used to go and play the servicemen, and all over the place. We went to San Diego, we went to Northern California, to all the forts and all of the bases. And that was quite a lot of fun because the guys got a big kick out of it, and we really got a kick out of it. When we were kids, so uh, we used to play on the corner lot, play with an old beat up ball, when the cover came off, we put friction tape on it and play, keep on playing. <laughs> Just that's how I started out playing. And eventually I played on the uh, local softball teams and a bunch of the national tournaments in Chicago and Detroit. P.K. Wrigley spent his, uh, sent his Cub Scout to Cincinnati for tryouts. And I made that and we were sent to Chicago to try out Wrigley Field. And I was put on the South Bend Blue Sox.